In this video, we're going to learn about the size of operator in C. So the size of operator will return the number of bytes that it takes to store either a type or an expression. So for example, we could have size of int, and this will return the number of bytes that it takes to store an int value. And it seems kind of odd because it almost seems like we're passing a variable type to a function, but size of is really an operator. So what we'll do is print out size of int and we'll have colon percent D to output an int value followed by a new line. And then we'll output what size of int actually returns. So we'll save this and compile and run a program. And we get that at least on my machine and with my compiler, the size of an int is four. So it's going to take four bytes to store an int. Now the size in bytes that it takes to store a type like an int or a double may actually vary from one system and compiler to the next. That's why oftentimes size of is used to help dynamically allocate memory. So for example, if we wanted to dynamically allocate space for an array of 10 int values, we could have something like this, int star array. So array is gonna be a pointer to the dynamically allocated memory is equal to malloc and in our call to malloc, we provide as an argument the number of bytes that we want to allocate on the heap. So we'll have, let's say, 10 times size of int. So what we're doing here is allocating space for an array of 10 int values. But by using size of, we're making our code more portable because on some machines and some compilers, size of int may return two. On other machines and other compilers, size of int may return four. Either way though, we're gonna make sure that malloc is provided with an argument that will give us enough space to store 10 int values. So that's very often how we see size of used in practice. Now there are some interesting things we should know about the size of operator. So the size of operator technically does not have the return type int. Its return type is actually size underscore t. Size underscore t is a special type in C. It stores unsigned integers. So size of will never return a negative integer. It will only ever return non-negative integers. Now size underscore t has a greater range of values than int. It can store larger integers than int. That means technically when we use the size of operator to be safe, we shouldn't use percent %d, which is for outputting a regular int. We should use zu, which will allow us to output an unsigned integer up to the range of size underscore t. If we want to store the returned value from size of into a variable, that variable should technically have the type size underscore t instead of int because size of could return an integer that's too large for a regular int variable to store. And in that case, we would have an integer overflow issue and we could have a bug in our program. As a practical matter, you often see size of used with percent %d and used with int variables, and it works just fine. We're only gonna experience this issue if size of returns very large integer values. And that's just not going to occur in the case of many programs, especially given how size of is frequently used to just return the size in bytes that it takes to store a type in order to make the program more portable. Now there's something else we should know about size of. Technically speaking, size of doesn't return the number of bytes that it takes to store a type or an expression. Technically speaking, what size of returns is the number of car sized units that it takes to store a type or an expression. So in other words, how many cars would it take to store that type or that expression? So the size of a car will always be one because the size of a car is the actual unit that size of is returning its result in. Now this is where it gets more interesting. So technically speaking, the size of a car in bits is specified by a constant car underscore bit, and it could be something other than a byte, where a byte is 
8 bits. But as a practical matter, on virtually all systems and with virtually all compilers, the size of a car is going to be 8 bits or 1 byte. So that's why even if technically speaking, size of returns is result in car sized units, because a car is always pretty much going to be a byte, effectively, we say that size of returns the number of bytes to store that type or expression. But I did want to explain that just in case you get confused from different definitions online. So some definitions will just say that it returns the number of bytes. Some will say it returns car size units, and that might be confusing. So let's try to use size of with some different things. So we'll have here printf, and this time we'll print out the size of a car. So we'll have size of car percent zu backslash n, and we'll have size of car. And we know this has to be one. So we can save, compile, and run our program, and we get size of car is one. What about a double? So we'll have printf size of double colon percent zu backslash n and we'll have size of double and if we save and compile and run our program we'll get eight in this case so doubles tend to take more bytes to store than other types we could also use the size of operator with a variable so for example we'll have a variable x of type double and we'll initialize x to five but it doesn't really matter for using size of. Then we'll have printf size of x colon percent zu backslash n. And I'm going to have size of space x. So size of is not really a function call. Size of is really an operator. And in the case of a variable, we don't need the open and close brackets around it. This will actually work. So we can save and compile and run a program and we'll get that the size of X is eight. And that makes sense because it takes eight bytes to store a double. So therefore a double variable X should also take up eight bytes. Now we can also use size of with arrays. So for example, I could have car string is equal to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I've got the characters from one to nine stored in this car string array. There's also gonna be the special null terminator character that ends the string. So altogether, we've got 10 characters in this car array here. If we do a printf of the size of this string array here, we should get 10. So we'll have the same thing as before, percent zu backslash n, and we'll have size of string here. And if we save, compile, and run a program, we'll get that the size of the string is 10 as expected. And this would also work with arrays of other types as well. So if we had double array is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and we have 10 doubles in this array here, we could use printf with size of array colon percent zu backslash n and we'll put the size of this array here and this time i'll use the brackets around array just to show you that will work too and if we save and compile and run the program we'll get that the size of the array is 80 and that makes sense because it's eight bytes to store a double value and we have 10 doubles in this array so eight times 10 gives us 80 bytes total one thing that's interesting here that I should point out is that we're using just the name of the array here and the array is not decaying to a pointer. So oftentimes in C, when we just use the name of the array without the index operator, we say that the array decays to a pointer. So for example, when we pass an array to a function, it's not like the entire array is passed to the function. What's really passed to the function is the pointer the memory address where the array is stored in memory. And we say that the array decays to a pointer. So we might expect if we have size of array that what we would really get back is the size in bytes that it takes to store the memory address where the array is stored. 
But this is one of the exceptions in C, where just using the name of the array does not have it decay to a pointer. We actually get the size of the array. We can actually use the size of operator to get the length of an array by dividing the size of the array in bytes by the size of one element in the array in bytes. So for example, we could have size underscore t array length is equal to, and we'll have size of the array divided by the size to store a double. So divide the size of the array in bytes by the size to store one element in the array, one double value in the array. Then we can print out the array length and we expect to get back 10. So we'll output the array length here and we'll save, compile and run our program. And we do get back an array length of 10. We could also divide the size of the array by the size of one element in the array. So for example, we could have size of the array at index zero. So divide the size of the array by the size of the first element in the array. And if we save, compile, and run this, we'll also get an array length of 10. We can also use size of to get the size in bytes that it takes to store a literal value. So for example, 1.23 is a double literal. And size of 1.23 should give us back 8 because it should take 8 bytes to store a double literal. Let's test that though. We'll have printf double literal colon percent zu backslash n and we'll output size of 1.23 and if we save compile and run our program we do get that a double literal takes eight bytes to store now most of the time with size of it's actually evaluated at compile time so it's not like as our program is executing the size of operator is working to establish the size of a type or an array because all these things so far are known at compile time. At compile time, it's known that this is a double literal and the compiler will know how many bytes that's going to take to store. Same thing with this array here. The size of this array is known at compile time. And so size of can be evaluated at compile time. Now in newer versions of C, we can have variable length arrays where the length of the array is not known until runtime. In that case, the size of operator will actually have to do some work at runtime. So for example, let's make a function called makeArray. And the makeArray function is going to have a single parameter length. And that's going to set the length of the array. So the function will create an array called myArray. It's going to be a car array. And myArray is going to have a length that's supplied via the length parameter. So at this point, we don't really know the length of my array until runtime, but the size of operator will still work. So we could have printf and we'll have size of my array colon percent zu backslash n and we'll have size of my array here. So if we try calling make array with different lengths, size of will work correctly. So down here, we'll have make array 20 and make array 10. And we can save, compile, and run our program. And we'll get the correct result for the size of my array. We get 20 and 10, which makes sense because my array is a car array. Now you might think that because these arguments to the function are literals, that somehow the size of operator is still working at compile time. Like somehow the compiler can figure out that the length of the array must be this and that because these arguments are supplied. But that's not the case. We could actually create a variable called size, set it equal to zero. We could prompt the user to enter the size. Then we could use scanf to store the size that's entered into the size variable. Then we could call make array with size, and this will still work. If we save, compile, and run our program, and then we enter in a size of 200 when prompted, we'll get size of my array is 200. 
So even when the argument to make array is supplied at runtime, the size of operator is still working. So sometimes the size of operator will actually work at runtime as opposed to compile time. Many descriptions online will say that the size of operator is a compile time operator. And while that's generally the case, sometimes it does do work at runtime. Now there's a case where the size of operator can fail, and that's when we have an incomplete type. So for example, we use the extern keyword when we want to use a global variable from another file. So for example, we could say extern int bad underscore array. So this here is an incomplete type because bad array does not have a dimension. So if we try to use size of with bad array, we'll get an error. Let's try that out. Down here we'll have printf size of bad array colon percent zu backslash n and we'll try to have size of bad underscore array. If we try to save, compile, and run the program, we actually get an error here. If we check out the error, it says invalid application of size of to an incomplete type int array. So we can't use the size of operator with incomplete types. So that's how the size of operator works in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.